Balak wanted Balaam. So this starts back. You pause it, it stops when you post okay. a new video. Okay, you have to post them together. Part one and part two. Okay. All right, praise God. Well, a little technical thing, difficulty there. This, this will be part two of, um, of the rest of it that we were um, uh, talking about the commentary. So we have started the commentary um, with uh, Numbers chapter, this is after 22, verse mm -hmm. 20 through 23, which it says that, um, and God came to Balaam at night and said to him, if the men come to call you, rise up and go with them, but still only what I tell you, you may do. And Balaam rose up in the morning and saddled his donkey and went to the princes, went with the princes of Moab. So, and God's anger was kindled against him because he went and the angel of the Lord stood. And remember, we talked about the angel of the Lord was God in the way as an adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his donkey and his two servants were with him. And the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way of his sword drawn in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. And Balaam struck the donkey to turn her into the way. Now the commentary says that God let Balaam go with Balak's messengers but he was angry with Balaam's greedy attitude as we had talked before uh, Balaam claimed that he would not go against God just for money but his resolve was beginning to slip his greed for the wealth offered by the king blinded him so that he could not see how God was trying to stop him though we may know what God wants us to do. We can become blinded by the desire for money, possessions, or prestige. We can avoid Balaam's mistake by looking past the allure of fame or fortune to the long-range benefits of following God. That's excellent, excellent. Now, Balaam, this kind of gives you like a little synopsis of Balaam. Balaam was one of those noteworthy Old Testament characters who, though not one of God's chosen people, was willing to acknowledge that Yahweh, the Lord, was indeed a powerful God. But he did not believe in the Lord as the only true God. That kind of clarifies some things, doesn't it? Okay. His story exposes the, the um, deception of maintaining an outward facade of spirituality over a corrupt inward life. Balaam was a man ready to obey God's command as long as he could profit from doing so. So you see how come God was angry with him? And you see how he didn't like his behavior? Because God knew where his heart was. Praise God. So this mixture of motives obedience and profit eventually led to Balaam's death which is in a few chapters over although he realized the awesome power of Israel's God his heart was occupied with the wealth he could gain in Moab there he returned to die when the armies of Israel invaded eventually each of us lives through the same process who and what we are will somehow come to the surface. Whom and what we are will some will come to the surface. Praise God. Most of the time. Well, I'll say all the time. It'll come to the surface. Eventually, who you really are will come to the surface. Praise God. <clears throat> Even if you don't know who you really are. It'll come to the surface. Who you really are. What your motives are. And mm -hmm. so on and so forth. That's why it's it's always good to examine yourself. It's always good to check your motives while you're doing something. So eventually each of us lives through the same process. We, who and what we are will somehow come to the surface. Destroying any mask we may have put on to cover up our real selves. Efforts spent on keeping up appearances would be much better spent on finding the answer to sin in our lives. Amen. We can avoid Balaam's mistakes by facing ourselves and realizing that God is willing to accept us, forgive us, and literally make us over from within. Don't miss the great discovery that eluded Balaam. This is very good to, very, very good to understand. 
Now it says the strengths and accomplishments of Balaam was widely known for his effective curses and blessings, obeyed God and blessed Israel in spite of Balak's bribe, weakness and mistakes, encouraged the Israelites to worship idols, returned to Moab and was killed in war. Lessons from his life, motives are just as important as actions. Your treasure is where your heart is. Those are lessons from his life. Vital statistics were lived near the Euphrates River, traveled to Moab, occupation, sorcerer, and prophet. So you can be a prophet of Baal. Praise God. Relatives, his father was Bor. Contemporaries was Balak, king of Moab, Moses, and Aaron. The key verses. They have wandered off the right road and followed the way of Balaam son of Bor, who loved to earn money by doing wrong. But Balaam was stopped from his mad course when his donkey rebuked him with a human voice. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is very, very good. Yeah, very good. Glory to God. Now the other one, what did I do with it? Well, here it is. I had it in the wrong one. Oh, here it is. Okay, this is from the Life Application Bible Commentary, and it says, uh, 2222, God was very angry. God permitted Balaam to go, but he was angry with him because he was still considering Balak's offer. Balaam's spiritual blindness was revealed through the incident of the donkey, his spiritual that blindness. It's was was very good. Yeah. These are very because good commentaries. Very good commentary. You could see the road. He wasn't physically blind. <laughs> but the donkey saw the angel. Yeah. And Balaam didn't. And the angel is spiritual. That's right. So yeah, the donkey. That was good. That yeah, commentary. That is. It is excellent. You know, Balaam didn't see it because he was blinded. Blind. Hallelujah. He spiritually was spiritually blinded. blinded. And you know what? A lot of people are, are spiritually, spiritually blinded. blinded. Yes, they are. Because you look at a person and you you say, sometimes I'll say, yeah, I understand what you're saying. But you're not really looking in the spirit. You're not looking as to the spiritual aspect of what is being said or what is being done. Just like uh, 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 someone quoted to me or really spoke to me the other last night and was saying that, you know, uh, that the government knows how to do X, Y, and Z and you have to go along with what the government says to do and their protocol for whatever they do or the world but I'll say the government and I had to say this and I said this is you have to realize that God is sovereign God can change the government's mind he can change your mind you know he can change anything he wants to change and you have to realize that he's sovereign ruler and I've said this before he's sovereign ruler once you get that in your spirit that he's sovereign ruler that whatever he planned for you to do just like Balak and Balak Balak wanted to curse the Israelites Balaam wanted the prestige and the honor and the money but God blocked them both and gave Balaam a lesson that he didn't learn so the bottom line is that you can't do nothing unless God permits it unless he permits it just like we talk about they can't put you out of your house unless if God put you in that house can't nobody put you out but God so that's why you need to pray you need to talk to God hallelujah about it is this where you want me to go God because if he did it can't nobody take it away from you praise God nobody can take it away from you nobody could curse the Israelites he said, how can you curse what God has blessed? How can you? And how could you be so stupid to think that you can? He kept saying, let me take you just one more place. One more place. <laughs> he kept saying, just one more, but one I more time. What the commentary said, they, Balak thought he was going to use Balaam to work magic on God to change his mind. But you see, witches, warlocks, Fortune tellers, 
sorcerers, necromancers. They're caught up in familiar spirits. They're caught up in the satanic. So they think they have the same pride that the devil has. That they can do this. They feel like they can do it. You know, they have no regard for God. Ooh, that's revelation. Glory that's to God. Amen. And you have to understand that they have no regard for God. At all. So, you know, it, it, it's up to you to make sure that you're close to him. To make sure that you're listening to him. Because, see, he knows all the ins and outs of everything. Just like I told that lady last night. I said, I don't care what you do, how you do it. You best be talking to God first. Because I don't care what the government say. I don't care what nobody says. If God wants this screen to stay on all night long, it'll stay on. I don't care who uh, uh, who tried to cut it off. If God wants it on, he can keep it on. See, that's what we have to realize. And so when he doesn't do things, praise God, that we want to have done, then we need to go to him and ask him why, or is there something I did, or is there something I need to learn from this? That way you'll understand what God is doing when he's doing it. Praise the Lord. So, I mean, we had to do a part one and a part two, so I'll post both of them, you know, because we had to, we uh, had a little technical difficulty. Yeah. Praise God. I'm, it made me think of that lady. What lady? I, reading this story all over again, mm -hmm. and the commentary this time with it, and reading that part about they thought they could work some magic on God to change his mind and mm -hmm. God gave us that revelation. I was thinking last night after I finished going over this again, that woman, the first time I talked with her, shortly after I met her, mm -hmm. that convinced me she was a prophetess of Almighty God. Amen. That woman was so accurate. Mm -hmm. It blew. She knew everything. Mm -hmm. She knew every prayer, everything I had talked to God about, because she repeated it back to me. Amen. And God's going to bless you here, and you ask the Lord for this, and God is going to blah, 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 blah. And she went on. We talked for an hour. I just knew this was my new prophetic friend <laughs> in Arizona. Amen. At the end of the conversation, we said, we even said bye. Mm -hmm. She said, oh, by the way, God is going to let you have that surgery you want. Mm -hmm. I almost fell on the floor. I knew it was God then. Mm -hmm. But in later years, when he revealed to me that she was a witch, Amen. and it was familiar spirit, Mm -hmm. and divination and witchcraft I was it it, it, it was I, it, I, I almost have no words for it because it was so accurate and that's what I was thinking last night it was so accurate and all, I mean down to the words and when I got ready to hang up that phone and she said oh by the way prophet from God. Hallelujah. But if God hadn't have revealed who she was to me, and I say that because the Lord has not allowed me in 12, 13 years mm -hmm. to open my mouth mm -hmm. and tell anybody about her. Mm -hmm. He hasn't allowed me to. Amen. And he told me, who told you? I said, you did, Lord. He said, so you can't get upset with these other people who are taking pictures with her and they all hanging around and they go to lunch together and they fellowship. Mm -hmm. You, How are you going to get mad at these people and stop talking to them because they don't know she's a witch? Right. Did you know she was a witch until I told you? Amen. I said, no, Lord, I didn't. He said, well, I ain't told them yet. Stay out of my affair." Amen. And I never said another word. And that's the truth. But that's how real. That's how real. And like you said, people don't. They don't know. I didn't know until God told me. I didn't know. Well, it's just like you said, like like uh, uh, Balak. 
Balaam, he didn't know. In other words, how to say at the end when he began to prophesy? Praise yes, God, he said he end. saw clearly. Yes. At the God end. opened his eyes to see clearly. And he didn't see with the donkey because he was blinded. He didn't see God, but the donkey saw God. See, this is the thing that's, that, you know, and anybody listening, you need to be careful about. Praise God. You need to seek the Lord. You need to really seek the Lord when you come across gifts and callings. You know, because you don't know if that gift is coming from Baal or coming from God. You've got to have discernment. You know what I mean? And not just because you see some great miracle happening, think it's God. It may not be. Praise God. And it may be. Do you know in later years, Apostle, not to, but this is important because it... Go ahead, go ahead. Later years after God had revealed she was a witch mm -hmm. we were in a Sunday service and she was praying for people and she laid hands on a woman and the woman fell out in the spirit and she immediately almost got over the woman whispering in her ear mm -hmm. and when I saw that I was so I was outraged I was enraged mm -hmm. And the Lord reminded me later on in the scripture, mm -hmm. didn't I tell you in the last days, mm -hmm. the signs and the wonders the enemy was going to perform? I just had to share that because like you said, people might have seen, and if God hadn't told me himself and showed me, I wouldn't have known. If you hadn't sought God, you wouldn't have known. That's the thing right there. If you hadn't have sought God, and in your heart been purposed for God because what God does when you purpose yourself for him even in your ignorance or your fakery because a lot of times you be fake with things praise God so God will not he'll allow what's going on with you for a minute and then he'll work with other things to help you praise God because like a lot of times um, um, uh, you know we have these things that we think is going to help us just like Balaam you know, and we think that, oh, if I get next to her, I'm going to be, I'm going to get this anointing. Or if I do this, I'm going to get this props and I'm going to get that props. You know, and you, a lot of times you don't even know. Because you're so used to doing it, it becomes a part of who you are. And that's why God begins to say the wheat and the tear. He begins to tear it apart. And he brings me like that. That's why a lot of people have a problem with me. It's because God uses me like that. He begins to expose who you are. What did he talk about in here in the commentary about who you are? Mm -hmm. He begins to use certain people to expose who you really are and who he wants you to be. That's why I tell people look in the mirror and see what's looking back at you. If you like what's looking back at you, then you ain't got to change. But I don't think too many people can look in the mirror and like what they see. And if you can look in the mirror and not like what you see and change what you see, then you're all the better for God. You know, and so these, these witches and, and people that, that call people to them, they speak like this other guy they were talking to me about. Like God taught me, taught me early on in my ministry about witches. I've encountered them in churches. Praise God. But God showed me that they have power. Yes, they do. They really have power. Don't think they don't. But you can't step to them. Unless you are surrounded by God. You can't step to them unless you are definitely in close proximity to God. Especially in these last days. I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you whoever's listening. Don't be stupid. And don't go off in your own way. I know this. I know that. You know you better be checking. Examine yourself first. And then ask God for deep discernment of spirits. And God will begin to open you up. Praise God. He opened Balaam up to himself. Glory to God. And even though Balaam didn't pay attention. If you don't pay attention. What happened to Balaam? He died. Glory to God. He was killed. If you don't pay attention. You might die spiritually. You know. I really don't know. You might. You know. Repent at the end. And go to heaven. I don't know. But the bottom line is that. There's a lot of. And there's more false prophets, more false teaching arising now. And the signs and wonderings, you got to know the difference. Just like I told you before about the lady that was going from church to church, did not know that she was prophesying out of the spirit of Baal. 
she did not know that so God used me to tell her that she needs to sit down because you are letting the familiar spirits speak to you about people and it's and it's not what God wants from you you're being used she was being used she was not um, uh, uh, you know uh, vindictive or anything she thought it was God but it was not God and God took me to the word he took me to the word that's why we have this subject here he took me to the word he took me about the Python spirit from the land of Pathmos and they what it does is a python he he uh, 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 squeezes you to death praise God then he eats you praise God but he squeezes you first and so like the Lord was telling her that you know you are speaking out of the spirit of Baal and you need to stop check yourself stop just praying all the time get into your word I just had a lesson earlier today about that you know, you can pray all you want, and it's a very good thing, but you still could be fooled because you are not in the Word. You need to pray and be in the Word. You need to obey, but you need to pray and be in the Word. Pray and be in the Word. Take time with God and be in the Word of God. A lot of people say, well, this Word was written by, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, King James. So what? Huli huli. There's so many different, um, oh, there's so many different translations of the Bible. So what? Are you reading the Bible to be reading it, or are you reading it by the Spirit of the Lord? Because the Spirit of the Lord is going to go between the lines and pull out what you need to learn. If you you read in the Living Translation, is it helps you understand, but you still got to read it with the Spirit of the Lord. King James is cut and dry, but King James got a lot of good in it. But you still got to read it with the Spirit of the Lord. If you don't, then you get the wrong interpretation or the wrong uh, uh, understanding of what God is saying. Are you reading it so that you can lord over people and say, oh, I know the word. Or, you know, I speak and then you speak the word, you don't memorize it. And, and, and they ain't got no power in it. But you, you let everybody else think you got it going on. And you ain't got it going on because the Spirit of the Lord is not behind it. It's your understanding. That's how come people get caught up. There's a church that I found out about that um, this guy is 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 prophesying, and, and the whole church be saying prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Another church I went to, I saw with my own eyes, called a guy up out of out of the uh, the audience, come up and prophesy. What kind of crap is that? You prophesy out of the spirit of the Lord. Even Balaam, even God had to put a speech in Balaam's mouth to speak what he wanted to be said. Then, after that, praise God, Balaam could see clearly, and then he prophesied. Glory to God, we need to get this. I hope y'all getting this, praise God. I hope you're getting it, because we need to get this. So that you're not, the reason why God wants, and we're starting, this is the first lesson, on the spirit of divination. The reason why God wants this taught is he doesn't want you fooled in these last days. You can pay attention or not pay attention. I'm just the messenger. I just come to bring you the message. Praise God. What you do with the message is up to you. Praise God. But I'm telling you, you best be paying attention. Because there's so much going on with these young people. Praise God. They need to see the salvation of the Lord. They need to see a difference. Praise God. And we need to be a difference. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. I'm sorry we have to do two parts of this. But, you know, it's all right. Praise God. Uh, listen to both of them. Glory to God. But we're going to be studying on this. And it's not super long. But then again we'll go into this, the um, deliverance ministry. Because you need to know this. You need to understand what this is all about. And the experiences that you have had will be um, a confirmation. Praise God. Mm -hmm. As to what uh, God was doing at that time. And just be great. It'll just be greater, a greater anointing and a greater understanding of what you've experienced, praise God, so that you can really step to the enemy, praise God. And God is doing a cleansing and a purging in everybody who will allow him because he's looking for vessels that he can use to bring the good news of the gospel to a dying world, people who are not selfish, self-centered, praise God, people who want to, praise God, 
help the move of God and not be trying to control but we're trying to just give so that God's people can move forth in the things that he has called them to do praise God and this is what God is doing I'm not up here trying to ask you all for no money or nothing like that if you feel like you want this word to go forth then you know you can praise God donate hallelujah give an offering whatever you want to do to Apostle Michelle Moody 626-583-9071 address 863 Manzanita Avenue Pasadena California 91103 People say that's the old way of doing things. Well, that's the only way I know how to do it right now. Praise God. If you got another special way you can do it, you can call me up and tell me. But right now, you know, if you want to donate, if you want to give an offering, that's how you do it. Again, you can call me anytime, 626-583-9071. Again, address 863 Manzanita Avenue, Pasadena, California, 91103. Okay? Praise the Lord. All right. I usually don't do that, but I feel led to do it because we all need finances to be able to get this word out. And so if you if the Lord puts it on your spirit, great. If he don't, great. I still love you. He still loves you. Just be led of the Lord. Glory to God. Open up and let God teach you what you need to know. So in these last days, praise God, you are aware of the devil's tactics. His strategies, praise God. So when he stepped to you, praise God, you already know you got power over him. And when, you, when, you, when he stepped to you, you got your sword of the spirit that you've been studying the word of God. And you can cut his neck off. Glory to God. You can cut his neck off. But without his head, he can't do nothing. All right? Amen. All Hallelujah. Right. That might be a little harsh, but it is what it is, baby. Because this war ain't no joke. And the devil is vicious and he's out to kill, steal, and destroy your life. Spiritual. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, for this word. We thank you for everything that you said, the revelation that you have given us. We thank you for the sugar shack yes. where God is at. <laughs> yes, Lord. We thank yes. you, Father God. Hallelujah for deliverance. We thank you for joy, peace, love. And everything that you have stored and laid up for those who love you. And we ask you, Father God, if we've said anything, done anything, or thought anything that is contrary to your word, displeased you in any manner, we ask your forgiveness and we repent in the name of Jesus. And we look to you to show us mighty and great works of your Holy Spirit in our lives and in this world. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen. and amen. amen. And we close amen. out and thank you for who is ever watching. God bless you and God keep you. Adios.